guys, welcome back to Sissy Spaces. And if you're new, welcome. Today's video is an early spring clean with me, the kitchen edition. But before we get started, happy Valentine's Day, and I'm so happy you're here. I hope you enjoy your day today, and I want to thank you for sharing a part of it with me. I was in such a great mood today that I wanted to deep clean my kitchen, something I've been really meaning to do for the past two weeks. But you know why I couldn't. And if you don't, check out my last two videos. Also, if you're new to my channel, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. And if you've already subscribed, hitting that like button really supports my channel as well as watching the entire video. As you can see, this cooktop is in need of some leaven, so I decided to vacuum up the crumbs first, then use some Dawn Power Wash and a scrub mummy to scrub off the stuck-on stains. After that, I'll wipe it clean with a damp microfiber cloth. My plan is to also clean and organize most of my cabinets and drawers. I started this process two weeks ago, and today, I'm going to finish. It's been raining all night and it's scheduled to rain all day. So I figured there's no better time than now to deep clean this kitchen. This month, I'm still reducing the amount of cleaning products I use as it's raining today and I'm not opening a window to air the kitchen out. So today, the only cleaning products and tools I'm using to deep clean this entire kitchen is Don Power Wash, the Dyson V15 Vacuum, four white microfiber cloths, Wyman's Granite and Stone Cleaner, Pledge Furniture Polish, and the Swifter Mop in wet pads. It sounds like a lot, but wait until you see everything I'm deep cleaning today. Also, in between cleaning my appliances, I will be rinsing out my microfiber cloth and as a reminder, I'm using four different white microfiber cloths and we'll be changing them out when cleaning different surfaces in the kitchen. For example, I used a microfiber cloth to clean the appliances, a second microfiber cloth to clean the eat-in table, chairs, and bar stools, a third microfiber cloth to clean the countertops, and a fourth microfiber cloth to clean the interior of the cabinets and drawers, exterior of the cabinets, back door, blinds, and moldings. By the way, this is a Gen Air 36 inch gas fiberglass cooktop with six burners. You have the option of changing up the range top configuration by adding a griddle and chrome burners and chrome knobs, but we decided to stick with the six burners and the black burners and stainless steel knobs instead. The cast iron grates and burner caps are easy to maintain and you can soak them in water to clean later or just scrub by hand as I'm doing. Unlike traditional cast iron, these will not rust if water's left standing on them. They're heavy and are guaranteed to never warp. I don't recommend placing them in the dishwasher though until you check with your manufacturer as some grates are not dishwasher safe. I noticed as I cleaned the grates, my scrub mummy was peeling. That just means it's time to replace it. Also, as you just saw, I used a damp microfiber cloth to completely remove all the soap off the grates before replacing them on the cooktop. I also want to wipe down the knobs. You can remove them to clean them, and I have done that once, but found it to be unnecessary as it's clean after each use. 
This is a sharp microwave drawer and I don't recommend it. It works well, but I find it difficult to clean than a standard microwave because you have a lot more nooks and crannies to clean in between. To keep it clean, the family and I cover our food before using, and if we have any food spills, we clean it up immediately. Also to remove any unwanted odors, I place a cup of water with a tablespoon of lemon juice, and I heat it on high for over two minutes. This also softens any stuck on stains, so you can easily wipe them away. I do use stainless steel cleaner to clean the exterior of my stainless steel appliances, but to reduce the amount of cleaning products I'm using today, I chose not to. And as you can see, a damp microfiber cloth works just fine. Up next is the Gen Air 36 inch dual ovens. We rarely use the top oven to prevent from burning out the control panel. So a quick wipe of the interior of the door to remove grease residue is all that is needed. We use the bottom oven almost every day and to maintain it, I wipe it down at least weekly with Dawn Power Wash and a damp microfiber cloth. And I keep a black liner at the bottom of the oven to catch any spills. Unlike the interior of the oven door, it takes a little more effort to clean my oven racks. Once, maybe twice per year, I remove the oven racks and spray them down with Dawn Power Wash and leave it on for at least a few hours before wiping it off with a damp microfiber cloth. I've also sprayed them with Dawn Power Wash and placed them in trash bags to sit overnight, and this worked really well. And if the racks are really dirty, another method that I've used, and also works well, is Barkeeper's Friend. You make a paste with Barkeeper's Friend in water, spread it like peanut butter all over the racks, and after one hour, rinse clean using a scrub sponge and warm soapy water. three appliances down and we've saved the largest and most expensive appliance for last, and that's the fridge. I'm not cleaning the dishwasher today because it's currently cleaning the dishes from breakfast, but I will again be cleaning the cluttering and organizing the cabinets, drawers, and cleaning my smaller appliances. At the end of my last video, I cleaned the center shelves of the fridge, so I won't be cleaning those today. Instead, I'm focusing on the six door bins, which come with these liners, that also need to be clean. The purpose of the liners are to prevent your items from sliding around as you open and close the fridge. And as you will see today, they were definitely in need of some good old fashioned cleaning. These liners are made of a rubber-like material and come in different shapes and sizes to accommodate the bands. Because they're made of rubber, I wouldn't recommend using rubbing alcohol or Clorox to clean them as it will dry out and eventually crack. Also, the bins come in two different sizes, two which are gallon size and four are half gallon size. If needed, you can also adjust the bins on the door to accommodate taller items. As I was checking the expiration date on these food items, I noticed two were close to expiring, so I tossed them. I rarely toss food items, but I only replace items when they're empty. And I figured if an item is close to expiring, it's seldom used and will not be used by the expiration date. Also, if stored properly, sauces can last up to six months. For those that are interested in this refrigerator, I don't recommend it. Again, it's a Gen Air 48 inch panel ready built in side by side refrigerator with a bottom freezer. It does a great job of preserving our food, but within one year of ownership, we had to replace the multi point LED theater lights, which are located in the refrigerator and the freezer. There are eight in the refrigerator, three on each side, and two at the top, and there are two at the top of the freezer. Again, the first year of ownership, we replaced all 10 lights at least three times. We extended the warranty and will continue to keep a warranty on this appliance for this very reason. <music> to make this process quick and easy and preserve the temperature within the fridge, I cleaned one bin at a time, closing the fridge once the bin was removed and closing it immediately as the bin was replaced. 
Quick tip, a fuller fridge is more energy efficient than an empty one because a fuller fridge needs less air to keep cool. When loaded properly, items keep each other cool and reduces the amount of warm air circulating when the door is open. The rule of thumb is to keep your fridge at least two thirds full, but be careful not to block the air vents. Once we're done cleaning this last store bin and liner, we'll finish checking the expiration dates on the remaining food items and then condition the eat-in table and bar stools. My goal today is to replace all the felt pads on the chairs and bar stools. I didn't realize how bad they were until I replaced them. If you don't have any felt pads at the bottom of your chairs and bar stools, I highly recommend you use them, especially if you have hard floors. I cleaned this eat-in table earlier this morning after breakfast, but here I'm conditioning it with the Pledge Lemon Scented Polish. If you have stained wood furniture, you need to maintain it by applying a finish which protects the stained wood from scratches and keeps it from fading over time. There are other wood furniture polishes that work well or even better than Pledge. I just prefer Pledge because of its easy application and light scent. Also, Pledge doesn't leave a waxy buildup behind and is cost efficient. Here, I'm removing the old felt pads and cleaning the area before applying the new ones. I love using felt pads, but there are some disadvantages. For example, they attract and collect pet hair and dust, and they're difficult to keep clean. In addition, the adhesive will eventually wear out and could partially detach or fall off, exposing your floor to damage. But in my opinion, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. The main purpose of felt pads is to act as a protective barrier between your furniture and floor. And when applied properly and maintained, they help prevent scratches, scuffs, and damage that can occur when furniture is moved or dragged across your floors. I noticed a few scuff marks on this cabinet panel, so I want to remove them before returning the bar stools. There is moldings at the bottom of this panel, which should prevent the bar stools from touching it, but we managed to push the bar stools against them anyway. After vacuuming and replacing these bar stools, I'm going to start cleaning the countertop starting with the TV. I rarely wipe this TV down and noticed earlier during breakfast how dirty it was. I'm using a different damp microfiber cloth to clean it and a clean dry microfiber cloth to dry it off. Again, if you wipe your wood or electronic surfaces with water, be sure to dry them thoroughly as any freestanding water on wood or electronic devices will eventually damage it. This area, along with the TV, are two of the most neglected areas within our kitchen, but not today. Again, my goal today is to do some early spring cleaning of the kitchen. And I'm not only gonna clean it, but declutter and organize it as well. I'm also getting an early start on my spring cleaning as I usually start in March. Also, quick history on spring cleaning. In the 19th century, the warmer weather of early spring enabled people to open doors and windows to air out and thoroughly clean homes of dust and residue from coal stoves and fireplaces before the insects had an opportunity to make their appearance. But guess what? You don't need to wait until March or April to deep clean or spring clean. You can declutter and organize your spaces anytime. And I feel, since we're indoors most often during the winter, it's a better time than any. purchased groceries from Walmart and Sam's, so we're fully stocked. Also, all of the junk food you saw earlier are mostly eaten by our two young adult sons as quick going grab snacks. Don't get me wrong, I do indulge on occasion, but in moderation. My motto is eat what you want, but in moderation and walk as much as you can. Also, I don't eat large meals. I'm more of a grazer, but will graze throughout the day. And I'm always drinking water and keep a bottle of water on my nightstand so I can drink it 
first thing the next morning. As a reminder, this is our pantry. We had the walls of our walk-in pantry removed and these pantry cabinets installed in 2017 when we did a full kitchen remodel. I absolutely love these pantry cabinets as I can see everything I have and only replace what is needed. Because of these pantry cabinets, I have saved a lot of money on food and time as I don't have to search for what I'm looking for. I keep it organized by only replacing what I need and designating a space for every item. And on occasion, like today, I clean, organize, and tidy as needed. You may also have noticed I don't keep very many items in these cabinets and drawers, and that's because I only keep what I need and what will be used. Also, weekly, the family and I conduct an inventory and update the grocery list of any low or missing items. We have a saying in our household that if it's not on the grocery list, then it will not be purchased. By the way, do you have any Valentine's Day plans? Hubby and I have been married for 32 years and Valentine's Day is really every day for us. But I do purchase cookies and kisses to acknowledge today. On our first Valentine's Day 32 years ago, Hubby made heart-shaped pancakes because I only wanted to eat pancakes on Fridays. And Valentine's Day in 1992 just happened to fall on a Friday. I still love pancakes, but I eat them any day of the week now, even for dinner. This is where I store my baking pans, large beverage container, charcuterie boards, wok, and cutting boards. I try to clean this cabinet at least once every three months, but may need to clean it more often after what I saw today. We only place clean items back in this cabinet, but for some reason I found a lot of dust and crumbs in here. I understand the dust, but where did the crumbs come from? It was so bad I had to pull out the crevice tool and I wiped it with my damp microfiber cloth and followed that up with a dry microfiber cloth. The rack dividers or cutting board dividers are removable, but the last time I removed them, I bent one. So now I'll wipe around them. They also gave me the option of a cutting board organizer drawer but I wanted to use the drawers for heavier items. And in my opinion, this was a great decision because as I age, things are getting heavier and heavier. I was asked, what's the difference between a charcuterie board and cutting board? The charcuterie board or any serving board is usually lighter and thinner than a cutting board. While on the other hand, cutting boards, the wood versions anyway, are made from edge grain or end grain wood. That means they can withstand lots of slicing, dicing, and chopping. Although I don't recommend it, you can use a cutting board as a charcuterie board, but be sure to thoroughly sanitize the cutting board first, especially if you use it for chopping meat. In this microfiber cloth, we're going to continue to clean these counters. Earlier, I told you that I will be using the Wyman's Granite and Stone Cleaner, and I am, but not on these outer counters, just the island. The outer counters don't get as dirty as the island, and the island is sort of like the workhorse of the kitchen. Today, I want to clean it thoroughly as it hasn't been completely cleaned in the last two weeks. Also, I definitely need to wipe this backsplash down as I failed to do it after cooking breakfast this morning. cabinet is where we keep our overflow of seasonings. It's narrow but deep and you'll be surprised at just how much it can hold. I keep two of the three shelves lined because again seasonings are kept here 
and the tiny bits of seasonings end up everywhere. Instead of using my crevice tool on the vacuum, I'm gonna wipe out the cabinet with a dry microfiber cloth first to remove the tiny bits and then clean it with the wet microfiber cloth. We're gonna continue cleaning the outer counters, backsplash, and we'll stop to clean the storage containers and small appliances located on the counters. Again, I'm using a damp microfiber cloth that I dipped in warm soapy water and a dry microfiber cloth to remove any standing water left behind. I'm also cleaning the additional small narrow cabinet located on the left of the vent hood. Here we store an overflow of cooking oils and my husband's favorite barbecue rubs. My husband combines several barbecue rubs in this container. I don't know what those seasonings are, but whatever it is, it really brings out the flavor in anything my husband places on the grill. Once we're done here, we're going to continue cleaning and organizing several other drawers and cabinets. I didn't need to declutter anything in these remaining drawers and cabinets because either I, the boys, or hubby use them. There are a few duplicate items, not exact, but similar, and it's because we all have our favorites. This is a two-tier built-in utensil drawer, and because of this, we're able to store two sets of knives and miscellaneous items underneath the utensil drawer itself. I like removing everything, vacuuming, and cleaning the drawer monthly because it gets pretty dirty with crumbs and other debris because it's used all day, every day. I also line this drawer because sometimes I've found the utensils not fully dry when placed in it. Also, the weight capacity of this drawer is much heavier than the others, and that is why there's a slight lean to it when it's fully extended. Good quality utensils and kitchenware are expensive, and I purchased ones we have from Amazon and Target. The ones from Amazon are full gold plated and I purchased them years ago. I don't recommend them though because the faux gold color has rubbed off over time, but the overall quality of the product is still very good. And the second set from Target are stainless steel. They're pretty heavy and I purchased them during their President's Day sale last year. Yep, that happened, and of course I picked it up, wiped both sides again, and kept it moving. By the way, these liners are from Walmart. I like using these versus the pill and stick ones because it doesn't damage your drawers, are easy to remove and replace, and are double-sided in case you get the other side stained. And as you can see, I maintain them by wiping them clean with a damp microfiber cloth. earlier, this is a two-tier utensil drawer. Along with cleaning this drawer, I had also planned to sharpen the knives, but the last time I did this, I cut my hand, so I decided to leave that drawer for hubby. It is a good reminder, though, to sharpen your knives when you clean your drawers, because knives do become dull over time, and depending on how often you use them, you should try to sharpen them at least once every three months. the fun part. The first time I removed these knives, I vacuumed the slots and found nothing there. So now I clean where the handles of the knives sit because most of the debris and dirt lie there. Also, for those that are unaware, 
Cutting knives should be washed and dried by hand because hand washing is the best way to preserve their sharp edge. And the abrasive dishwashing detergent with a high heat and jostling with other dishwashing items will cause the blades to dull prematurely and give your knives nicks in the edge. Also be careful when cleaning knives, especially these small paring knives. These little knives are sharp. Their main purpose is to peel potatoes and apples, and they can be used for mincing small amounts of garlic, onions, and coring tomatoes. I call this my catch-all drawer for our remaining cooking utensils. I purchased this removable tray from Walmart and I like it because it comes in three different parts, which are adjustable. By the way, the smaller, lighter tray is from another set of containers I purchased from Walmart, and I use those in my baking drawer. As you can see, I had to remove some of the contents to get the tray to fit back inside the drawer. Again, this storage container is adjustable, so with a few minutes of spreading and closing it, I was able to get it back in place, as well as everything that was originally in it, except the pizza slicer, but that was in the wrong drawer anyway. One of the hardest working drawers in our kitchen besides the utensil drawer because we use something out of this drawer every day. This is also the drawer with duplicates or similar items because again everyone in this household cooks and have their favorite cooking utensils. I chose to use a smaller drawer to store these items because if I hadn't instead of two similar alike items it would have ballooned to much more. I found by limiting my space requirements, I reduce the chance of having a lot more duplicate items. This is our third spice drawer or cabinet, and we'll clean the fourth one in just a minute. We love our seasonings and spices in this household, and whenever we get a chance, we add flavor to all our dishes. The smaller drawer spices are not used as often as the larger ones we'll see in just a minute, but I like having all the different types and enjoy experimenting with different flavors. Having the boys do the same and are not afraid to try something new. This is the fourth pull-out spice drawer I was referring to earlier. We use these spices every day and in larger amounts. As such, I purchased these spices in bulk from Sam's. I also reuse the containers to store borax, as the borax box is a pain to use. It's heavy and powder spills all over the place before, during, and after using it. After replacing these spices, we're going to clean the last two cabinets in the kitchen, and in my opinion, the filthiest, and they are where the trash bins are located. 
To prevent odors, I clean them monthly and the boys remove the trash weekly or whenever it's full. I've also found by doing this, it reduces our chance of getting or attracting bugs. In my opinion though, all homes have bugs. And believe me, we have bugs too, but they're few and far between and some are just good at hiding. I didn't need to vacuum this drawer today because surprisingly, I didn't see any visible crumbs. There were stains located on the door and the bottom of the drawer though, but they were easy to remove using the damp microfiber cloth. This is where we keep our third trash receptacle as well as Max's hard food. I'm sure I mentioned this before, but we left the back of the cabinets off so we can get to the plumbing if needed. I also purchased these rubber liners from Amazon because this is also where our island sink is located. We've had leaking occur before in the main cabinet and these liners saved us tons of money because we didn't have to replace the cabinet, backsplash, or countertop. Today, I'm also vacuuming and mopping all the floors within the kitchen and we're starting in the eat-in area. I found by breaking the mopping and vacuuming into sections, it's less overwhelming. Also, we still need to vacuum the chairs and change the felt pads. While that's drying, I want to clean and tidy by this back door. We leave a towel hung by the door to dry Max as he comes in from the rain, but according to Max, it doesn't dry him enough because he still comes in and rubs himself on the rug inside of the couch. As a reminder, after sweeping and cleaning the doors and moldings, we'll get started on the chairs. As you can see, I'm not using Sprayway glass cleaner on the door because again, we're limiting the amount of cleaning products we're using today. Also, I did use a dry microfiber cloth to dry the glass after using the wet one to clean it. I don't know why I didn't use a crevice tool to clean in between the crevices of these chairs. I guess at this point, I was just too lazy to change out the nozzle. I wish I had also turned the phone around because Max was doing the very thing I just mentioned, which is to dry himself off using the rug and the sides of the couch. guys could feel the difference in the movement of these chairs since replacing the felt pads. These make a world of difference because when sitting in them, you can easily move the chairs back and forth, not having to worry about damaging your hard floors. And this includes vinyl floors. I think the 
hardest part of replacing these felt pads was finding the time to do it. I also ran out of the round felt pads and ended up using the square ones that I traditionally use in my dining room. Not a problem though, because I placed it on next week's grocery list. some of these felt pads peeled as I removed them. This means they were worn down and definitely in need of replacing. So we're done with the chairs and bar stools in the kitchen and we'll be replacing the felt pads on the dining room chairs next week. We'll finish cleaning the kitchen today by cleaning the island, the blinds, and vacuuming and mopping the rest of these floors. these chairs are now gliding across the floor. I know you guys are tired of hearing me say this, but I can't help it. And it makes my heart happy when a simple change is this good. The last time I cleaned this countertop on this island was about two weeks ago, and I wish you guys could see all the grease residue that was on here before I cleaned it. I guess it's a good thing having this color of granite because it does a great job of concealing the dirt and stain. Whenever I clean the island countertop, I take time to clean the pop-up outlet. I have used Q-tips in the past to clean the crumbs out of the corners, but it was not needed today. It's still raining, so I'm gonna leave the umbrella open and use the rug to catch any water dripping from it. After this, we're gonna finish cleaning the remaining counters, backsplash, and small appliances. Also, this is a checklist of items needed to complete our taxes. I print a new one each year and use the manila envelope to gather all of our documents until we're ready to file. By the way, the checklist is nothing special. It's just a list of documents that we've filed in the past and it's mainly used to ensure we have everything before filing. You know, if I'm cleaning this side of the countertop, I'm also cleaning my toaster. I traditionally clean the toaster weekly, but it has been two weeks since it was last cleaned. And as you can see, it's fuller than what you've seen in the past.
We're almost done deep cleaning this kitchen. The only thing left is to clean the four sets of blinds located in the eat-in area, vacuum, and mop the remaining floors. If you're still with me, I really appreciate your support. And if you haven't already hit that like or subscribe button, please remember at the end of the video to do so, as it really supports my channel. these floors were dirty and wait until you see the mop pad when I'm done mopping them. Although I just mopped the floors two weeks ago. the blinds were filthy and I wasn't even done yet. I wish I had done a close-up of what came from this rag as I rinsed it. Let's finish mopping these floors and join Max on the couch for some much needed TV time. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like, subscribe button, and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.